Hai Gembira Squad, apa kabar? Selamat datang kembali ke channel ini. Kemarin aku dapat kesempatan untuk beri presentasi di University Scholars Day. Dan presentasi ini tentang apa yang aku belajar tentang yang namanya Third Culture Kids. Jadi aku tulis makalah tentang Third Culture Kids ini semester yang lalu. Dan Third Culture Kids itu anak yang dari suatu negara tapi tinggal di negara lain. Jadi contohnya aku ya, anak dari Amerika tapi dulu tinggal di Indonesia. Jadi aku belajar tentang itu, terus tulis makalah dan Uh, kemarin aku beri presentasi tentang makalah itu Jadi aku cerita sedikit tentang tinggal di Indonesia di presentasi ini Sebagai contoh Maaf semuanya dalam bahasa Inggris Tapi ini dia presentasinya Hello? I think that's okay, we're going to go ahead and get started okay, so you A little bit early Hi everybody, my name is Sarah Johnson I'm very excited to speak with y'all today hey. um, And I'm a sophomore majoring in Bible and Interactive Digital Design And today, as you can see on the screen, hopefully, what we're going to talk about today is who am I, the effects of growing up as a third culture kid. Um, first of all, raise your hand if you've ever heard of the term third culture kid before. Awesome. Okay, great. So we're going to start by defining this term. A third culture kid is a person who has spent a significant part of his or her developmental years outside of the parent's culture. TCK, that's short for third culture kid, uh, build relationships to all the cultures while not having full membership of any. So you can think of it as an intersection of two circles. The first is the parents' culture, the second is the host culture. And so where those two intersect, that's the third culture. So my brother and I are examples of this. This is me and my brother when we live in Papua, Indonesia. This is Indonesia right here. Um, and Indonesia is located in Southeast Asia, It's above Australia and below like Singapore, Malaysia. It's the country highlighted in red. So examples of third culture kids like subsets are like missionary kids or military kids. And with increasing globalization and ease of travel, the creation of third culture kids is also increasing. Um, all right, so we're gonna be talking about five different points related to TCKs. The first is this childhood's Im impact on their social life. Second, the role of parents and how this childhood will affect them. Third, the TCK identity, how they view themselves. Fourth, what it's like for them going home. And fifth, the future. What are common trends in TCKs as they grow into adulthood? So let's begin with their the effect on their social life. And right off the bat, you can see that there are no, um, there's no way to guarantee how it's going to turn out for some kids they may end up becoming social chameleons. And this means that when placed in a new environment, they may become very cautious and slow as they take in their new surroundings, um, making them appear socially slow. Uh, and so in new environments, common traits associated with TCKs is hesitancy, uncertainty, shyness, things like that. On the other hand, some kids will end up becoming very confident in their abilities to adapt to new situations because of the, difference of the childhood that they grew up with. Um, they've had to be flexible before many times and they know they can do it again. An example of this is a girl named Helga. She was from Belgium. Um, she was a third culture kid growing up. And then when she became an adult, she was able to confidently, without fear, take a solo trip from uh, Belgium to New Zealand and Australia. And like her friends were very shocked that she was confident in doing that by herself. But it was because of her childhood and how it had impacted her. Another interesting effect of this childhood is that TCKs often have a higher social sensitivity than their monoculture uh, counterparts. Social sensitivity measures the ability to, um, to read social situations as well as the ability to judge others' feelings, cognitions, and personalities. And in a study comparing monoculture and TCKs, um, that they were more able to accurately interpret social situations. So third culture kids tend to be um, pretty good at reading, reading the room, reading, things like that. And because they've been exposed to a wide range of people throughout their life, third culture kids are often um, very willing to form relationships and friendships with people that are very different from them, because that's what they've been surrounded with their whole life. All right, next up, what kind of role do their parents play in what kind of people these kids end up becoming as their third culture kids. Well, it probably doesn't come as a surprise, but the parents play a ginormous role in, in this. Um, because of the constant moving and changing for third culture kids, their immediate family is often the only stable relationships they have growing up. 
and pretty much the most important one. Paul Ann Van Recken, who wrote the most widely known book on third culture kids, said that the single most important factor in determining how TCKs or any kids ultimately fare is the parent-child relationship. And in order to have, um, in order to help kids have a good experience with this childhood, parents need to make sure not to neglect their kids, which <laughs> is something all parents should do. Um, also, <laughs> the parents' attitude towards why they are in this country, why they're making these moves, what they're doing, is going to directly affect the children. If the parents are happy, have a good attitude about it, explain to their kids why they're there, what you know, why they're there, and why why they're doing what they're doing. The kids will be more content, happy, feel like they have a sense of purpose, and they'll help mitigate feelings of resentment. Um, yeah. Okay. Next up, let's talk about the kids' identity. How do they perceive themselves? Well, some kids view themselves, or some people end up viewing themselves as having a blended identity, like they're a combination of the different cultures that they've been a part of and will act similarly no matter where they are. Um, others view themselves as having multiple identities that are equally a part of who they are and they might come out in different ways depending on where they, they are currently or who they're surrounding themselves with. Now the question, where are you from, is um, often a bit challenging for third culture kids to answer. Do you answer where you were born, what your passport says, where you live the longest, where your family lives, where you live now, what place feels the most like home? Often, each of those questions has a different answer for third culture kids. So TCKs often have a feeling of rootlessness and uncertainty about who they are and where they're from. All right, next up, going home. Um, moving to a new country certainly presents challenges. Um, but perhaps a little more surprising, so does come returning to their country of origin. Often. Living in a different country will change you. You know you've been surrounded by a culture that's different than the one you came from. You've met new friends, they've impacted you. And so the person who left the passport country is not the same person that comes back home. And as I just said, the definition of home can be a bit blurry at times. R.J. Dormer put it very well when he said, it is perfectly normal to feel foreign in a foreign country. What is less normal is to feel foreign in your own country. A great example of this is a girl named Hiroko. She was a third culture kid from Japan who lived in a different country. I don't think the paper I read said where she lived, but in that culture she learned values and cultural norms that helped her to succeed, and then she ended up moving back to Japan. And when she got there, those those cultural norms and uh, they helped, they, sorry, they ended up making her be perceived as arrogant. So she had to completely readjust her identity in order to fit back in. And that's an aspect of reverse culture shock. Another aspect of reverse culture shock um, for some kids is suddenly being surrounded by people that look just like them. Depending on where they're from and where they move to, in that second country, <laughs> they may have stuck out like a sore thumb. They might have drawn stares just by walking into a room because they look completely different than everyone else. Um, and for some kids, going from that to completely blending in can be a bit of a shock. It's because being viewed as different and become part of their identity, part of the way they view themselves, and when that was taken away, so was part of their identity. Um, reconnecting with old friends can also present a challenge. If you've ever moved, I'm sure you've experienced this as well. You know, both of you have changed, both of you have experienced different things, you might not always be able to relate to each other, and so reconnecting can be a bit difficult sometimes. Um, so what lies ahead for third culture kids as they grow up and enter adulthood? Well, their childhood often gives them some skills that are uh, helpful in adult life. Things like flexibility, a broader understanding of culture, um, and open-mindedness are often there. And depending on where they lived, of course, they may also be bilingual or multilingual, and those can present some uh, unique career opportunities. Third culture kids often also bring this high mobility lifestyle into adulthood, um, sometimes to the point where they become restless if they stay in one place for too long, which isn't always a good thing. Uh, many third culture kids bring an aspect of international life 
into their adulthood as well, whether that be just by making sure to travel often or by taking a job that has an international component. A lot of third culture kids often maintain a strong connection to their host country. I mean, this is a country that, I mean, for me, I lived half my life in Indonesia. And so, you know, that country shapes, has shaped who you are, even if you're not originally from there. It's a part of you and you're not gonna forget it. So what conclusions can we draw about third culture kids and this lifestyle? Well, for one, I think we can see that it is not a black and white issue. It has the potential to be a very challenging and very painful experience for some kids. And for other kids, an incredible one that they love. Um, we can't really make a blanket statement about whether or not turning your kid into a TCK is a good or bad thing. It depends a lot on circumstances. Um, but in a study of 19 TCKs that was done, 15 of them reported that, or they answered emphatically that their experiences had been mainly positive. Three of them said that there were both positive and negative aspects to it, and one said that although it was negative um, at the time, in retrospect, it was good. So personally, I think that if parents are armed with the knowledge of what can happen and why the things happen, that they can you know, make decisions that I hope would be a good experience for their kid. Um, TCKs are, can be very different. You know, a boy from Japan, a boy from Japan living in Germany is not gonna be the same or have the same experience as a girl from Australia living in like France or something. But what they do have in common is their similar journeys and types of challenges faced. Um, that's all I have for you guys today. Thank you very much for your time. Do you have any questions? I will try to answer them. Pass. Where are you from? <laughs> <laughs> um, I was born in Texas, lived in a handful of other US states, including Tennessee three times. Um, I live in Utah, currently live in Idaho, lived in Indonesia half my life, but on two different islands. I've lived in about 15 houses, I think, so. You don't usually say that when people ask you. <laughs> <laughs> um, Maddie? Um, which of those aspects has been the hardest or the most challenging? Mm. I don't know. See, okay, for me, it was definitely on the side of it was a good experience. I'm very thankful for it. Um, I don't know. I've been able to maintain good friendships with people, thankfully, um, and I enjoy my time in Indonesia. I guess maybe the hardest thing was probably the feeling of like, I don't know where home is. Home is very much tied to my family for me. Wherever my family is, that's, that's home. But that fluctuates. <laughs> yes? Um, so do you find being in an environment with a higher proportion of other um, TCKs creates a kind of auxiliary community among those TCKs, or is does that make sense? Like, yes. is that sort of an artificial construct? Um, in my research, I found that a lot of people agreed that it was very much easier for TCKs to form friendships with other TCKs, and that um, third culture kids, kids tend to because they have to move so often and friendships, you know, they're kind of unstable because they might be pulled away from their friends at any moment, you know? Sometimes if they become friends with non-TCKs, they tend, they can push them away because they're kind of like over eager in forming friendships because they don't know how long it's gonna last. Um, and so, and they do tend to be able to connect a little bit easier with third culture kids. And so um, there is a bit of a community there. It tends to be, at least for my research I found. Yes. Do you find yourself wanting to travel a lot or do you find oh, yes. yourself wanting to stay? Oh, oh no. I definitely am one of the people that wants to maintain that high mobility lifestyle. Um, I definitely love to travel. Um, although, I think that's pretty cool. <laughs> <laughs> I can find myself moving back there too, but I think I think I want to move back to Indonesia and do mission work there. Yeah, that's cool. See you. So, um, you've, you've moved from culture to culture. Mm -hmm. You've also moved from subculture to subculture. That's true. So yeah. has one or the other helped the other? Mm -hmm. So like, because you've been in Texas, you've been in Tennessee, you've been in Idaho, those mm -hmm. are all different cultures, sub subcultures. Yeah, right. Like, I don't know. I think when I was little, I didn't think about it too much. I, I think I only started really researching this a little bit in the last few years. So I think, I think it was just life. You know, like I didn't really think about it too okay. much. Okay, so 
in your explanation of TCK is this is mostly mixing cultures in terms of um, what countries you're in. However, the same general idea could play out within one country in, like you mentioned, military kids mm -hmm. mixing communities, or um, I've known people who spent half of their <clears throat> half their childhood homeschooled and half public schooled. Yeah. So there's lots of little ways for those experiences to mix and create sort of subcultures might be a good word. Can you comment on how some of these same um, effects of, that TTK's experience might apply to those smaller um, circumstances oh, yeah. within the I country? I think absolutely. The, the same principles will apply, probably on a little bit of a smaller scale. Right. Um, but absolutely, for sure. Because you know, you're, grow, you're growing up one way part of your life, and then suddenly being thrust into a new environment, you're going to react in a very similar way to moving to a different country. Yeah, for sure. It's a 10 from high. You have two minutes. Two minutes left. Any more questions? Yes. There are two parts to this question. Okay. Does it affect the females as, as the same as it does the males? And what, and you and Seth have a conversation about this, and has it affected Seth differently than the way it's affected you? That's a good question. I have not found any research on the difference between male and female um, in this. Sorry. Um, <laughs> but that is an interesting thing I would like to do more research on. As for me and my brother, we have, it has been interesting to see the difference in our, our future life plans, I guess. My brother tends to be more of like, he wants to stay in the States and like live here for a while. Whereas me, I'm like, I think I want to go back to Indonesia. I think that's probably what I want to do, at least a part of my life. And I'm curious if, I don't know why exactly, it could just be a personality thing. But it could also be about what periods of our life were spent there. For me, my very early childhood and my becoming a teenager years were spent in Indonesia. Whereas for him, it was, he was a baby when we moved back to the States and then was like seven to 11, I think, when we moved back there. So I'm not really sure. I'd have to do more research on that to figure that out. Yes. Could you get a show of hands how many in here are? Oh, yes. Raise your hand if you're a third culture. Nice, awesome. Hopefully you guys agreed with some of what I said. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks very much.